As web designers, especially if you're a freelancer or part of a small agency, trying to wear all the hats that you need to to get projects not only in the door, but completed and completed successfully, and then offering support afterwards is incredibly time consuming and can be very stressful. Imagine if you had an assistant that gives you a second pair of eyes that opens up possibilities that you may have not even noticed. This is where AI deep research can come in super useful. In this video, I'm going to go through a range of different ways in which you can harness this for yourself and take advantage of that second pair of eyes without having to pay someone on a full-time basis. Okay, let's take a look at the first option. So meet your AI web assistant. As a web designer or agency owner, imagine having an AI sidekick to audit and improve your websites. ChatGPT's new deep research mode, which is introduced in 2025, can do exactly that. It autonomously scours the web and analyzes content to provide detailed data-backed insights. This in itself can be incredibly useful. I've been harnessing this myself over the last few days to take a look at some of my websites, some of my clients' websites, and it's opened up a ton of little things that I didn't notice, inconsistencies maybe, opportunities we've missed, changing to the wording to give us even more impact. Now, the most important thing to take away here is this is a second pair of eyes. This is not written in stone. You can take what you think is relevant, use it if you think it's purposeful and useful, and ignore things that you don't think are useful. So there's certain assumptions that AI is always going to make, and they may not always be correct. So always use this with caution and take a look through, read it, absorb it, and use it in a professional manner. So why exactly does it matter? Well, you want to ensure high quality and performance on every site, and that can be challenging. AI can now help check your work against industry best practices in minutes, saving you guesswork and lengthy manual reviews. This video will show you how to leverage ChatGPT to elevate your site's clarity, SEO, and conversions. However, there are other options available that give you the same kind of deep research. So you don't have to rely on ChatGPT. If you have other options, check those and try them. So we're going to take a look at four key areas in this video. The first one, we're going to take a look at analyzing the site structure and the copy, suggesting content and SEO enhancements, offering evidence-based conversion tips, and then finally, we're going to mine social medias for audience problems and insights. This is great if you want to take a look at things like Reddit and social media places and forums for your particular target market, and then look at places where you could improve your website, maybe add content, this is a perfect example of what we've done with my partner's website. There are certain areas that we'd overlooked, and now content is being written based upon the feedback that we've got to give us an insight into those areas. And hopefully that will then open up more possibility for driving traffic to the website as search engines pick up that information and it gets shared in various different ways. So let's take a look at how we get started. For this example, we're going back to my partner's website, the Tender Coach, and I've already done the audit on here. These things haven't been done yet. So this is a good example of what we started off with and how we've used AI to give us feedback. So the first area we're going to focus on is using AI to check the website structure and the copy and then analyze that information and see where improvements could be made. So this could be improvements in the readability and the clarity of the content that's been added. It could be in the overall review of the website areas we've missed where we have inconsistencies. You can take a look then and then the copy that could be improved, any areas that we may be missing out on. We may not use the language that we've actually told it is our target demographic. We may be missing those things out. Because we can get it to search the entire website or specific page, we can be as broad or as very narrow as we want it to be. I've got this to go through the entire sort of services section and the home page, ignoring some of the other sections. So this has gone through and checked a lot of information out. And it's come back with some great feedback. So the nice thing is it reinforces the whole concept of what my partner has done, the language, the tone of voice, those kinds of things. The first thing it comes back with and says, the messaging is, messaging is friendly and conversational. This is exactly what she's aiming for. So to have this go through and find that information out and say, that's exactly what you're doing is great. I haven't told it that's the tone of voice, but this has gone through and check that out and come back with that feedback. You can see then that we've got observations on the homepage hero section, one of the key areas on any page. So the hero section immediately promises to win more tenders with expert bid support, which is a strong opening. So one of the key messages that we picked out from this is that the website isn't specifically targeting the SMEs or small to medium enterprises, which is the market sector that my partner actually wants to be targeting. So now she's going to go back 
tweak the wording, include that information inside there. We can focus it a little bit better. So it's highlighted an issue, it's given us recommendations on how we can improve it, gives us some examples of what it suggests is a good title in comparison to what we may have, and subheading section and those kinds of things. So again, this is great to sort of pull that information out of what we have there. So for example, highlight the SME focus up front, include a brief tagline or intro line on the homepage like specialist tender support for UK SMEs to immediately signal your target audience. Explicitly naming small businesses or SMEs in the hero or subheader will make visitors feel like this is for me. Again, great suggestions. These are gonna be businesses that are not necessarily having a particular tender experience, they might not have any sort of people inside the company that would know what to do. This targets them, tells them what we want. Then we're gonna address the pain points. So incorporate common SME tender frustrations, where our bidding is too complex for small teams, the pricing, those kinds of things. So again, it helps us focus on what we're trying to convey. Use familiar language, so generally the tone is warm and clear. Continue avoiding heavy jargon, which like I say is the specific thing my partner is aiming for. And you can see it gives more suggestions. Then the value proposition and clarity, again, breaks down into what it sees, what it thinks could be improved, the observations. And the nice thing about using this kind of technology is that it tells you why it comes back with those suggestions, gives you links to articles where it's gone through, pull those suggestions and information from there, and then you can go and check those out yourself and see what are those sort of industry papers and things talking about and if it makes sense to include in what you're doing. And this is the most important thing. This is a second pair of eyes. This is not something that's written in stone. This is something to help you see things in a different light, see where you can make improvements or your client can make improvements and offer suggestions to give you, well, exactly what you want out of the whole sort of setup. Now, if you find this video useful, why not hit that thumbs up button down below to tell YouTube that you're getting value from it. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button as well. But if you're not getting value, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with the video. So next on the agenda is enhancing the content quality and improving the SEO. Now, while SEO is definitely changing and AI is becoming more prevalent in tools like you know Google search and things like that, there's still a place for having well-structured, well-written content that when someone lands on it, it answers their questions and uses the right terminology, the right language, and is optimized to have the best chance of being found and helping people. So whether you're getting this found on search engines like Google and so on, whether it's videos you're creating that includes those keywords and phrases and the transcriptions and so on are helping you, you know, YouTube being the second biggest search engine, or any other kind of purpose, the SEO, having well-structured content is still incredibly important. Again, having this to go through things is incredibly useful. So you can see content gap analysis. This is going to go through and find out any areas in the content that could be filled out with more information, especially when you're taking a look at the competitors. So for example, we identified several different places that content could be created, that's written articles, videos, posts on social media, and so on. These are all identified by using these kind of options inside the deep research. So again, this is incredibly useful. Aligning SEO best practices, ensuring that the you're using those best practices, not those dodgy practices, that you are applying frameworks like Google's EEAT or EAT, experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Again, exactly what you want the site to convey. So we can use this to go through, like I say, and analyze content, check for any areas that we're missing out on, check that we're hitting those best SEO practices, and so much more. So incredibly useful to kind of go through this. Now, the third area that I'm using this for is conversion optimization. This is something that for this particular site, the whole point is to convert someone from being a reader into someone that contacts my partner to potentially become a paying client. This is something that lots of websites are there to do, whether it's to buy a product, to sell a service, whatever. So we need to have a look at conversion. And if you're, again, you're not a specialist in this area, understanding and having a second pair of eyes to look at how you can improve that conversion setup it's incredibly useful. So you can see benchmark against high converting sites. So it can review the pages on your site and compare them to known high converting websites in that particular industry. Then you can see what are they doing to get good quality high conversion rates. And then you can implement that or similar kind of processes into the site that you're working on. 
These are all things that if you're not a specialist in this area, which most freelancers are not going to be, these are just useful pieces of information. Again, backed up by information that we can access by clicking on the links that go through and show you and explain where it's got this information and this kind of thought process from. So this isn't just sort of your general random chat GPT comes back with total conviction that everything is 100% right. This is going through, it's researching the information on high ranking sites, on informational sites that are well respected and coming back with more useful information. Now, the fourth and probably the most interesting, in my particular opinion, in this example is the audience research via social media option. This is like sending a bunch of people off to go and read social media, to read Reddit, to go to different forums and so on in the particular industry that you're looking at and then go and find out what are those pain points, what are the questions that are being asked then come back and give you suggestions and information about those particular points. Then you can create content around them. So for example, going again back to my partner's website, one of the key things go addressing the pain points directly in the copy. So for example, if you are an SME looking at the tendering process, there are common questions and common pain points that have been identified by using that research. Don't know where to start. Tenders are so time consuming for us. We're too small to win this. The process is complicated. I'm afraid of messing up. There are four videos, articles, content you can put together on your website that the search engines will pick up on, again, using those SEO best practice we've just talked about, making sure they're optimized, using various different ways in which you can repurpose that content, shorts, video, free PDF downloads on your website via things like LinkedIn articles and so on. If you've got a Facebook page or a group putting content on there, you can repurpose the same information. And again, you can use AI to do it. Start off with the original article and then get it to create multiple different versions based upon that original article. There are so many different use cases in which you can tap into sort of deep research and AI to improve things. Some of the best books that have been written out there about websites that convert the best are the ones that answer the questions, the common questions, the common pain points. They create that know, like, and trust. The E-E-A-T that Google is so happy on now. These are all things that emphasize your understanding, your experience, and all those kinds of things, your authoritativeness, which is not easy to say. But this gives you the ability to see where those potentials are and then fill those gaps, answer those, flesh your website out. These are things that I'm taking into account myself and I'm creating content for one of my products, which is my Essential Web Designers Documents Pack, because there are pain points that I need to address. And this is a great way of doing it. So I'll be creating videos, shorts, articles, free PDF downloads. All those things will be available for free. And the whole point is to educate people on how having the right processes and documentation and things in place can be super handy. And if they want to do it themselves, they absolutely can do. But if they don't, the Essential Web Designers Documents Pack, link in the description, is there for them. So they can simply pay the price of a couple of coffees, have access to that, and they can save themselves time and effort and money by just doing that. And that's where this is kind of super useful. So before we wrap this up, let's take a quick look at an example of how you'd actually use deep research and how it all works. So the first thing you need to do is enable deep research by clicking on it. Once you do that, anything you ask inside here now is going to be deep research based. So as you can see, this is the prompt that I use for my partner's website. How can I improve the content and structure of insert website link here and convert visitors into potential clients. What could be improved in the copy to make it more persuasive as well as informative? The target market are UK-based SMEs looking to help and support when applying for tenders may also be new to the whole tendering process. Take some time to research LinkedIn, Reddit, and any other online social media groups that focus on SMEs struggling with the tendering process. Look at their pain points, the language they use, and areas that they are asking for help. Keep the research the last 12 months and issue is UK only based companies in your research. So I've been very specific about what I'm going to do. Review the website, go off and do some research for me, telling exactly what my market sector is. Generally, then what you'll find is it'll come back and ask for some clarification questions. That's exactly what we have here. So to make sure that the research is focused based upon the prompt that we've inserted, are there specific services that you offer? Example, bid writing, consultancy training, etc. So this is going to come back and ask you questions. So would you like the competitor sites to be reviewed as part of the analysis? Do you want to do a competitor analysis? If you do, you'll probably be asked what websites you want to do that analysis on. Should the tone of the copy aim to be more formal, professional, blah, blah, blah. So you can tell it the tone of voice that you want. So that's what it's going to use when it's checking the content structure. 
Are there any particular pages on your website, example, blah, 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 you want us to focus on for conversion improvements? So for this example, I told it I want the home page and the services page. But obviously, you could set this up to do whatever you want. And the questions will differ based upon what you ask it in the initial prompt. So then you just simply go through, answer those questions and anything else you want to put in there that you think is going to be useful. And then it'll go off and it'll do that research. So you can see this is going to just read back what you've asked it to do. It's going to tell you what it's going to do. Then after a period of time, it usually takes about 10 minutes. It's going to tell you the sources, the number of searches it's done and so on. Now, if you want to, you can also do things like upload PDFs and images and documentation and things like that to help it in any way that you want to. But fundamentally, this is what you have to do. It's not complicated. It does take some time. It's just a case of being as structured and as thorough as possible. And what I would 100% suggest is when you've got a prompt that comes back and works well for you, save that prompt and use it. Tweak it as you need to, modify it as you need to for the base on the website and the sector that it's in and those kinds of things. But it's not complicated, it's not difficult, and you can get it to come back with so much useful information. So to quickly recap, there are four key areas that I think are absolutely invaluable when you want to use deep research in a tool like ChatGPT for your web design business, whether you're a freelancer or small agency. Number one, you can get it to go and analyze all the content of yours or your client's website and see any areas that could be improved. Two, you can go in and check out the SEO and look for best practices and areas in which you can improve the SEO on the website. Three, look for ways in which you can improve the conversion rate of your website, whether that's actually getting someone to buy something, sign up, contact you, or drop you an email. Conversion tips are invaluable. And then finally, we've got number four, which is to go and check out social media, take out Reddit and things like that for areas in which you can address the pain points, the issues, the questions, and all those kinds of things that your specific target audience are asking and looking for help on. This is incredibly valuable. But there are so many more things you can do. But hopefully you found this video useful. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.